maybe we could take a moment and talk about atrazide and its effect on uh, male sexual behavior in amphibia to the, <laughs> the, the sperm studies sure. because um, sure. Tyrone Hayes is a wonderful researcher um, who established a link through his research between atrazine exposure and male sexual behavior of amphibia. Yes. Could you elaborate on that? Tyrone first caught frogs in the wild uh, in environments that were more or less exposed to atrazine and showed effects on development and sexual behavior. Then he, in his lab, he actually exposed them. So he knew exactly who was exposed and to how much. And he showed that the, and I can't tell you what percent or what, you know, but a significant number of frogs exposed to this pesticide atrazine chose to mate with other male frogs. Tried to mate with other male frogs, presumably unsuccessfully. Well, they cl they mounted them. Mm -hmm. He has photos of the male males mounting males. That's a remarkable result. It's been kind of um, you know used and misused out there in the in the in the media and in popular culture. Um, but if nothing else, it suggests that the organization of the neural circuits and neuroendocrine pathways that control um, sexual I don't want to say partner because it's a mating thing. This the frogs aren't monogamous, but um, uh, uh, sexual preference are um, significantly impacted by this by this atrazine. Yes, um, and and it suggests that that there are other environmental chemicals can as well. And we I don't know how if we'll have time to go there, but I did w work on neurodevelopmental outcomes in relation to prenatal phthalate exposure, and so. I think the overarching idea here is that the brain, like the genitals, is sexually dimorphic. And there's many people, by the way, who will take offense at that. Really? Yeah. I think there's, I mean, going back to the, the work <laughs> of Frank Beach in the uh, psychology department at UC Berkeley, I know. Um, showed this in Beagles. It's been it's been shown in pretty much every but species. But I just tell you that. But, but that, it's not a better or worse. I think this is what no. people need to hear. Like yeah. dimorphic does not mean better or worse. Right. It means different. different. Right. Right. And that there and there are, for example, advantages to spatial um, reasoning in a male, that which are related to testosterone. You, right. You know that. So spatial. I mean, I think there. Yeah. I mean, uh, my understanding of this literature, and I'm not an expert in this particular aspect, which is the behavioral phenotypes. Yeah. Uh, but you know, like the medial preoptic area of the hypothalamus is known to be sexually dimorphic, dependent mm -hmm. on testosterone mm -hmm. converted into estrogen mm -hmm. during development, et cetera, et cetera. And, th and there's just so much evidence of this. Mm -hmm. um, how it links to behaviors is can I think can be reasonably placed into um, ethologically relevant. Um, uh, evolutionarily logical um, right. arguments when talking about rodents or beagles or even rhesus macaque monkeys. I think where people get um, a bit inflamed is when people try and take the sexual dimorphisms that have been observed in animal brains or in even in human brains and tack those to specific abilities or, or, or lesser abilities. I think that's yeah. when people sort of go, wait yeah. a second, like I have much better sense of direction than my yeah. husband. And you go, well, yeah, like, you know, and then you go, well, well, does that mean that she has higher testosterone than him? And then maybe, and then, and pretty soon you're, yeah. you're in uh, a, 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 almost a no man's land, a no person's land of, of, <laughs> of conflict, of confounding variables. You're right. Right. But I really appreciate that you raised this yeah. and also that you said it and I didn't because <laughs> I, I feel safer that way. But look, there is a, a very simple, outdated questionnaire, <clears throat> and it's play behavior. It's called the PSAI. Mm -hmm. It's been used for years. Have you heard? I don't know if you've heard. rough yeah. and tumble play. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And there are 24 questions on there, and they are sexually dimorphic, I guess you could say. That they're, they're, you know, my child likes to play with dolls. My child likes to play dress up. My child likes to play rough and tumble, uh, et cetera. And we gave that questionnaire to our population um, and looked at the answers uh, that the mothers gave, both in our population, by the way, and a Swedish population of a colleague there, uh, Carl uh, Bornehag and Gustav Bornehag. And, and um, what we found, higher phthalate levels, these 
anti-androgenic phthalates were exposed, you know, were associated with less masculine male typical play in our male boys. So, this you is know, phthalate exposure to in the utero. to the mom. Baby is born in the young human child. Four, four, yeah, four years. I think it was four years of age. Four years of age, less rough and tumble type play. That's right among the boys whose mothers were exposed to more phthalates during a critical period of development. Now you can see that's a politically loaded <laughs> issue now. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know I, a... yeah, it, well, I think we're, I mean, let's, let's, let's have some fun with this in, in, in the scientific sense. The, the notion of dimorphism is, you know, okay, male and female brains are different, right? Which I, and male, female defined in those, almost all those studies as presence of a Y chromosome. And then people say, well, there's some, there's XYY and then there's XXY. Okay. But most of the time you're talking about XX chromosome or XY chromosomes at birth. Forget everything else for the moment. These are always distributions. This is what I think people need to know. We're not talking about, these are not, this is not, uh, you know, two hills of data separated by a valley. These are overlapping distributions. Correct. Right? So you get males with a quote unquote female like distribution, you get females with a quote unquote male like distribution. And I think as long as we acknowledge that, then we're just talking statistics. Right. We're not we're not placing any cultural or um any value on it really whatsoever. Right. right. But right. but if you you could make the analog to the androgenal distance, it's kind of similar. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the same exposure, salad exposure. You have something changed statistically. We don't see huge differences mm -hmm. <laughs> in the boys' genitals, mm -hmm. uh, and and we don't see huge. I don't. We know these kids have not been scanned, so we don't know how their brains look. But based on their answers, we don't see huge differences. We see tendencies. We see they are more likely, if they had been exposed to these phthalates to want to play dress up and have tea parties, more likely. Doesn't mean that they're all going to, but that's the direction and so on. So I think we have to just think about more likely, not absolute. Yeah. 